are going to remain standing as we sing from the gospel hymns and songs number 61 gospel hymns and songs number 61 Lord speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone as thou hast sought so let me seek thy airy children lost and lone O oh, lead me Lord that I may lead the wandering and quivering feet O oh, feed me Lord that I may feed thy hungry ones with manna sweet O oh, strengthen me that while I stand firm on the rock and strong in thee I may stretch out a loving hand to restless with the troubled sea. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may teach the precious things that dost impart and wing my words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart. Oh, give me thy own sweet rest to me that I may speak with suiting power a word in season as from thee to weary ones in needful hour. Oh, fill me with a fullness, Lord, until my very heart will flow in kindly thought and glowing word, thy love to tell, thy praise to show.
for the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 13. John 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not, save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you, before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask, who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? 
Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. John 14 Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom ye neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. May God help us to be
Like a bird, she's flying from coast to coast. And then, suddenly, an attempt on the bird to roast. But thanks be to God, she cannot be stopped by the host. 
and thanks to God Almighty, for Jesus has come to save the lost. There's a power coming from Calvary. There's a power coming from the throne. And that power coming from Calvary from the throne will touch you. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. I'm telling you, every chain will be broken. Anything that tied you down, call it Satan, call it sickness, call it evil spirit. There is a glorious escape for everyone today. And that's your story for the month of June as the GCK returns with a theme, Supernatural Deliverance from Christ, live from Ilori Quara State and scheduled to fly across the world their satellite, social media, radio and television. GCK 2.0. This June, Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kui, River Brains, Supernatural Deliverance from Christ, June 23rd till June 28th, 2022. Your special appointment for the Supernatural Deliverance from Christ has now arrived. Because I'm telling you that every poverty is cancelled. Sicknesses are cancelled. All deformities and the works of the devil of the flesh, they're cancelled in Jesus' name. Get set, for together we must fly to our supernatural deliverance from Christ's destination. Your testimony will be greater than you ever imagined. DCK 2.0, live from Ilori Quara State. Join us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Final day. Hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight again, we come because of redemption. The Lord has purchased and the Lord has provided redemption. For redemption. Perfect redemption. Amen. Total redemption. Amen. For you. Amen. And whatever you have not got on day number one, day number two, day number three, day number four, day number five, final day. Amen. You will have, you will receive, your possess in Jesus' name. There's power in that name. There's healing in that name. There's redemption in that name. There's solution to every problem in that name. And I come to you tonight in that name, Almighty, All Powerful, All Sufficient Name of Jesus. Everything is yours tonight. Amen. Everything is mine tonight. Amen. The Lord confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you continue to do. And Lord, I pray that today, in every life, in every ministry, in every family, you confirm your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray tonight you'll touch everyone. Amen. You deliver everyone. Amen. And you bring your salvation, redemption, salvation to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. <clears throat> Before you sit down, shout redemption. redemption. Shout total redemption. Total redemption. Mine. 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 Just tonight in Jesus' name. 
you can see that as we come to the final day of this full redemption crusade as we were having the nation singing from various nations and when I saw the Egyptian choir and they sang my mind went back to the first time I was invited to Egypt to come and conduct a week of crusade. Now, when we got there, there were challenges. The people there, that church in particular, and a lot of Orthodox churches, they had never seen direct miracle healing and were there and actually the pastor invited us he spoke to me he said please don't preach like you preach back home in Nigeria I said why he said look at those people there at the back they are there for security and every word you speak they note down if you say anything that they don't agree with they report to the government that same night and then they will whisk you back to your country and then you'll never come again they said you're here I said yes sir and then here this is not Pentecostal healing something. He said, you're here? I said, yes, sir. You know, I go to many places. And when they tell me things, I don't argue. I leave them alone. And then I began. And I spoke. And what we did, at that time there was no transmission like this all over the world. We recorded whatever we did, like on Monday night, and in the night we reproduced that. We linked up with many churches in Egypt, and in the night we'll take those recorded messages to them, so that what we preach on Tuesday or Monday, they relay on Tuesday. What we preach on Tuesday, they relay on Wednesday up to the end of the week. You know? Some of those churches, that one week, they doubled their attendance. I thought there would be fires that clapping there. And then, <clears throat> as I began to speak, I didn't think about what the pastor said, because he was saying it out of fear. And I preached the word, and I brought the word and the message of redemption of life eternal and then i said now we're going to pray for those who need christ in their lives if you want to have jesus as your personal savior those two security people at the back they raised up their hands <laughs> salvation redemption came to them and then we began to pray for the sick and I said, now we're going to pray for the sick. They've never seen anything like that before. And in one of the locations that I went later, when I wanted to do that, a medical doctor came to the front because he wanted to see all those people. And I just stood at the pulpit, just like I do here, and then I prayed, healing there, healing there, healing there. They started coming out. They wanted to give testimony. The doctor said, no, I will examine you myself. He examined them. He saw miracle, raw miracle. And they began to give testimony. To cut a long story short, that doctor gave his life to the Lord and became a member of the church in Egypt. God is at work and here tonight in Yenegoa by Yelstar stage our own stage 
you don't know but I will tell you the government of Ayelsa State through the deputy governor has now conferred on me the privilege of being a citizen of Bayelsa State. <laughs> Praise the Lord! And so, when you look at me, don't say, it's from, from where I, am I? From Bayelsa State. The Lord will bless us tonight. And as we come, Tonight, I'm talking on redemption. I'm talking on timeless, perpetual redemption through blood of Jesus. We're looking at First Peter, First Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse 18. First Peter chapter one, reading from verse 18. For as much as you know. That she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Then in verse 19, the word tells us, but with the precious blood. Of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. In the blood, the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, the sickness of the world, the suffering of the world, the Lamb, the blood. The redemptive blood, the saving blood that comes and it flows into your life. What can take away my stain, wash away all my guilt? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through that blood, the blood of Jesus, tonight we have timeless redemption, perpetual redemption instantaneous redemption a kind of redemption that prepares us for life eternal three things we're going to talk about number one marvelous heritage of salvation through the blood bought redemption the redemption has been purchased for us and it is bought by the blood of the lamb number two miraculous healing of sicknesses through the beating, bleeding redeemer. He was scourged. He was smitten. Stripes were laid on him. And by those stripes, you are healed tonight. Number three, meaningful holiness in sanctification through the boundless, blameless redemption. Let's look at number one. Number one, Marvelous heritage of salvation through his blood bought redemption. It tells us in, in Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 23, it says, For all have sinned the high, the low, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the Nigerian, the African, the American, the European, everyone all over the world, in every generation, in the fourth century, until this time, all have seen. Notice, it doesn't say that all will keep on sinning. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say all are helpless. And everyone will remain, you see, it doesn't say that. It says in our past life, before we met Christ, before Christ became our Savior, our Redeemer, before He became the final sacrifice, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How do we move from that stage of sinfulness 
and we move to the salvation of God. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, being justified freely. Being justified freely by his grace. What's grace? God's redemption at Christ's expense. Christ paid for it all. He paid for your salvation. That's grace. He paid for your freedom. That's grace. Without you doing anything, the grace of God, G for God, R for redemption, A for art, and C for Christ, E for expense. When you put everything together, grace means God's redemption at Christ's expense. Grace means God's righteousness at Christ's expense. Christ paid for your righteousness and the grace will bring you to the righteousness of God. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. The riches of heaven. The riches of the righteous life. And the riches of the mighty power of God. Grace brings you the redemption, the righteousness, the riches of God at Christ's expense. And being justified freely by his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And then he says in verse 25, verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. In the blood that gives us cleansing, in the blood that gives us conversion, in the blood that gives us covering is the blood that keeps us a new life. And now we're declared we're the children of God through the faith we have in the blood of Christ to declare his righteousness for the remission, for the removal, for the forgiveness, for the taking away of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. And the blood has been shed already. And the salvation is available already. And the salvation will be yours tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me good by years of stage. Amen. Amen. And then uh, it's that blood, the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Christ. The blood of a redeemer that gives us total freedom. Freedom. It sets us free from sin. And we do not continue in the path of darkness. We do not continue in the way of darkness. We do not continue in the lifestyle of darkness anymore. Because the blood has redeemed us. And tonight... Final night of this redemption crusade as you hand over your life unto the Lord. Total redemption will be for you in Jesus' name. Look at that. First Peter chapter 1 again. Reading from verse 18. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 18, it says, For as much as ye know, for as much as ye know, look at that word, no, no, no. There are different levels of knowing. You can open a book, read, and then you know mentally. You can come across the author of that book. And he relates with you. And he talks to you. And you know him socially. Then it happens that the author of that book, which you read, and from what you read, you knew mentally. Now you came across him, and you interact together. And you talk together. And you know him socially. And then as you keep on talking, 
He gets interested in you if you're a lady. You get interested in him as a man. And then you begin to plan. And eventually, you get married. You don't just know him now. He's writing mentally. You just don't know him now socially. Now, you know him intimately in relationship. Because now, your husband and wife, there are people that know Christ mentally. They've been to Sunday school. And they've been to church a lot of time. And when you mention Christ, they say, yes, I know him mentally. And when you mention the salvation of the Lord, I know that mentally. When you mention, if we confess our sins, if faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Say, Pastor, I can tell you what that is in the Bible. First John chapter 1 verse 9, he knows that mentally. But, you now continue, you want to know him, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You go from knowing him mentally socially and now you know him intimately is now your savior is now your redeemer and you can tell i felt his presence i experienced his cleansing i know him that's the knowledge we're talking about here now for as much as she know that she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Look at verse 19. But of the precious blood of Christ, he shed his blood for you. And you know that, not from the history books. You know that, not just by hearing somebody talk. You know it experientially. That the blood of Jesus, as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that blood without blemish and without spot, has now wiped your sins away and taken your sins away. Look at uh, verse uh, 22. In verse 22 there, he tells us, he says, sin he have purified your souls in obeying the truth. When you know Christ experientially, he dips his hand in your soul and he cleanses your soul. He takes away that evil, that sin, that transgression, that iniquity in your soul and he cleanses you. And then he tells us, he says, that it is through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. And see now that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. See that now you are saved, you are redeemed, the blood has cleansed you. The love now is not the love of the lips. I love you. I love you. I love you. The man is hungry. I love you. And you don't provide food. The man is thirsty. I love you. You don't provide water. And the man is having a challenge in his life. You never be sick. I love you. The love that we're talking about, when Christ has cleansed you, will make you now to so love him. You don't want to cheat him. Love him. You don't want to touch his wife. You don't want to commit any secret sin with his wife. You are thoughtful of him. You love her. You don't want to do anything sinful, anything fleshly with her husband. And you love your neighbor and you want to see. You don't want to have a bad example, a sinful example before them. You want everything you do to show the love that will drive them to Calvary. Practical, spiritual, 
tangible, helpful, hopeful love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart. With a pure heart. When you are saved, you know, people talk about love, 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 love. And they talk about erotic love. In Greek, it's eros. It's of the flesh. Flesh, touching flesh. Touching, intimate with flesh. In the love of adultery. The love of fornication. That's one. That's not what you are talking about. That one is polluting. That one is destructive. That one will lead people to hell. But now, you have the love of God from a pure heart. Pure. It's like if your heart is open, people will know that the kind of love you have does not have any sin, any immorality, any evil. You don't want to take advantage of her. You don't want to take advantage of him. Because now, in the pure love of God, with fervency. That's what the Lord does when we're saved, we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's the marvelous heritage of salvation through his blood, but redemption. And the Lord will do it for all of us today. I said the Lord, the God of heaven, will do it for all of us in Jesus' name. He has bought us. He has paid the price. He has given everything that needs to be given so that that blood will convert us, will cleanse us, will purge us, and will take every form of secret sin, habitual sin, occasional sin, personal sin, Society sin, the drunkard sin, the smoker sin will take everything from us in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, I'm still going to ask for by Elsa State. Amen. Yeah. Point number two now. Point number two miraculous healing. I said miraculous healing. I said, miraculous healing. Yeah. I've um, traveled here and there, many places. Why am I telling you that? Am I bragging to say, I've been to places you have not been? No. You must understand at my age, I must have gone to here, here and there. It will come to your turn. Yeah. As we are getting older and older, as old as I am, and I'm not through yet. Yeah. I said I'm not through yet. Yeah. So when you stand and then you are traveling along, who knows? Might even be in one plane in the same plane as days go by. What's the person I'm talking to right there? Praise the Lord. So, let me tell you my story. Do you want to hear a story? Yeah. We were in America, New York in particular, some years ago. And we held a series of meetings. And as we were finishing up, with their way of life there, when we finished, did it allow me to just go like that, then they started, they lined up, shaking my hand. Glad you came, come again. Glad you came, come again. Do you want me to come back to Bielsa? Yeah. Yeah, say that now, say that now. Glad you came, come again. And then they were shaking hands and shaking hands. And there was one man on the wheelchair. He was there, glued to his wheelchair. And I was seeing then, glad you came, come again. Glad you came, come again. He also wanted to say, glad you came, come again. All of a sudden, 
he rose up from the wheelchair and he started walking and then he walked to me leaving his wheelchair behind and stretched out his hand and said glad you came come again it will happen to you and then in my traveling 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 not this last February now, some years ago, I went to Jalingo. Not this one, I'll tell you about this one later. And as I got there, on the final day, many things happened. One man who had been born lame, 23 years of age, as we said, healing miraculous healing and we said in jesus name he had been walking on a board with rolling tires under that board and then when we said in jesus name the power of god struck him and he rose up and he started walking that's your turn it comes your turn today and then we had finished. Physically, I was exalted, uh, exhausted. And I was to go into the car and move out so that we can rest for the night to travel on the following day. And they had brought three paralyzed people. And one sitting down, the, one, the other one on the mat, and the other one there, three of them paralyzed, could not move at all. When we came out, the security brother said, why did you bring all these people here? Already we're finished. And this, and I said, hold on, leave them alone. And before I entered the car, I said, in Jesus' name, get up. The next one, in Jesus' name, get up. The next one, in Jesus' name, get up get up and it was still there and then we entered the car and as we entered the car getting to the gate i heard shouting i said stop wait 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 what's happening there they said the first one got up the second one got up and the third one got up god is at work is at work in your life yeah. and today that same redemptive power resurrection power the power that gives recovery will come in your life in jesus name yeah. miraculous healing of sickness through the beating bleeding Redeemer, Isaiah chapter 53, and we're reading from verse 4, Isaiah chapter 53, reading from verse 4, surely, let me hear by Yelta, by Yelta state, surely. surely, he has born, he has carried our griefs, he has carried them away, yeah. your grief, he has carried away. Your sin, he has carried away. Yeah. Your sickness, he has carried away. Yeah. Your suffering, he has carried away. Yeah. And carried our sorrows. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more sadness. Tomorrow when you wake up, you wake up in the joy of the Lord. Because Christ... Our Redeemer has carried away our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He had no transgression of his own. Christ had no sin of his own. He was bruised for iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Hey, look at this one. And with his stripes, 
we are healed we all of us here my sister there my brother there my son there my daughter there we're in the same family now spiritually and what he does for the hedge of the human family he does with everyone healing today deliverance today with his stripes I am healed it is confirmed in Jesus name you remember when was I last month 2022 February end of February where did you hear I went and many many miracles took place in fact those who are deaf and dumb it so happened that they had to line them up this one deaf and dumb ears open mouth open the next one ear opened and the tongue loosed the next one ear open ten of them they had to line them up and it happened to them it will happen to you that your boy will speak again that your daughter will speak again everything that has bound you you will discover that there's miraculous healing for everyone here tonight with his stripes were healed and then i learned of another boy this boy in the family the mother testifying that child had had epilepsy and many times the epileptic spirit will throw him down marks on his head because of injury marks on his body because of injury of epilepsy of epilepsy and sometimes for days every day two or three times and then that had been happening from the age of nine he's now 16 seven years in a row without respite the spirit of epilepsy will not allow the boy to rest or the family to rest and then they came to the crusade on the final day like tonight yeah. well the final prayer like tonight yeah. well the final amen like tonight yeah. when we said that spirit come out in jesus name yeah. that spirit came out from that time until this time evil spirit epilepsy will not come back again yeah. it will happen in your family yeah. all those heartaches and all those problems the lord will take away because with his stripes tell me tell me let heaven hear you christ has heard you're healed in jesus name look at jeremiah chapter 17 verse 14 jeremiah chapter 17 reading from verse 14 look at the prayer simple prayer heal me O Lord and I shall be healed can you repeat that prayer heal me O Lord and I shall be healed look at the second part of the prayer save me and I shall be saved can you say that For thou art my praise. The Lord will be glorified in your life tonight. Yeah. By his miracle, 
by his healing, by his deliverance, that will be glorified in your life tonight. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed. Point number three now. Point number three, meaningful holiness in sanctification through his boundless, blameless redemption. What does that mean? There are times in your own personal life, you have said, I want to be better than I am now. And then, on the 31st of December, going on to the 1st of January, you are making resolution. Resolution. I will not do that again. I will not go there again. I will not buy that thing again. I will not fight again. I will not, I will not, I will not. Resolutions. But you didn't know the power in the blood of the Lamb. And so all those resolutions, like a pack of cards, they fell and they were scattered in the new year. You started the old lifestyle again. But now, from today, let me hear you. From today, the power of the blood of the Lamb will make you holy from within. Righteous from within. Yeah. I was in Togo, and the Togo people will be hearing me now. A woman had, had real concern for the husband. And the reason is because he, was, he could have been the medical director in that whole nation. The only thing that stopped him was drunkenness. That he even kept his job as a medical practitioner. That was the mercy of God. And the wife ran to me and the wife said, My husband has a challenge. Always drinking. Always drinking. And he could not have the power to overcome that drinking habit. I said, invite him. Then I will see him. And I'll pray with him. God will set him free. Will give him a holiness of life. Like he will give you tonight. Yeah. And she kept on piling pressure on the husband. The meetings are going on. We're almost ending. Come, come. And she did everything a good wife could do to persuade him. So on the final day and the final meeting... They said, okay, I'm coming. Go ahead. Let's go together. I told you I'm coming. Go ahead. And the woman came expecting the husband. And as the husband was coming, he saw a beer parlor by the wayside. And then he branched there. And he got himself all filled up with the wrong kind of stuff. But he still said, I'll see go there. We had finished the meeting. We had said the final prayer. And I was sitting down. At that time, I could still see a few people. And then he staggered in. And I could tell. Because the moment he staggered in, I could perceive the heavy odor of that thing, the stuff he had filled himself with. And he sat down. And I said, Tell me your story. What do you want? What should we do? He said, I want to be free from this kind of thing. I said, I didn't even allow him to finish. I said, In Jesus' name, you are free. Yeah. And we finished. And I was going back home from that day. Anytime he perceived, the, uh, the uh, smell of alcohol, it irritated him. He didn't want it anymore. The Lord changed his life. I'm looking at you. The Lord will change your life tonight. Everything you've tried and you say, 
I wanted to, I wanted to, good intention, but we didn't have the action that will follow and make you a new man or a new woman. Your life will change tonight. Yeah. And then after he has saved you, he will sanctify you and make you holy. Yeah. Can God do it yeah. for you? Yeah. For you? Yeah. Can he do it tonight? Yeah. Look at First John chapter 1. First of all, from verse 9. First John chapter 1 from verse 9. If we confess our sins, look at that. That's all. That's all. I come. There's no pretense. And I say, God, what can I tell you that you didn't know? This is who I am. This is who I am. And that's who I am. If we confess our sin, final he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, he'll forgive you tonight. Amen. All the past sins of your life since you were born until this time, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Say amen. amen. That's fulfillment in your life. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth who? Cleanseth who? From all sin. He'll do it for you. Can he do it for everybody here at the same time? A mass. Instead of one, one, one after the other, he'll do it for everyone. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will give you the grace and the strength and the power to go and see no more. And the things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. The dresses I used to wear, those kind of exotic dressing that will turn the head of other people. And they'll be thinking of wanting to do some bad things with you. The dresses I used to wear, I wear them no more. And the drinks I used to drink, I drink them no more. And the idolatrous feasts I used to eat, I eat them no more. Something happened to me because Christ came in. Things are different now. In your life. In your family. In your language. In your community. Things are different now. Amen. And it starts with, if I confess my sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me all my sin and to cleanse me from all iniquity. He'll do it for you tonight. Amen. It's bowed. And X and eyes open and eyes closed. Ex bowed. The Lord on this final day, He doesn't want you to go back home the way you came. Just tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I want that change. I want that turning around. I want all those resolutions that have been taken. And without your help, I couldn't live right. I want to live right tonight. I want to have redemption, forgiveness, salvation, freedom from all the sins that bound me. Lord, I come. If that's you, you're coming with all your heart, 
and you are not having any reservation, Lord, I come. Wherever you are, you rise up. God bless you. You want that change tonight. You want that salvation tonight. You want that forgiveness tonight. You want that transformation of life tonight. Where are you? Raise up your hand. And rise up. Final day. And your salvation is here. Final day. And your forgiveness is here. Final day. And your transformation from old life to the new life is here tonight. God bless you there. The Lord is still waiting for you. He'll change your life. He'll forgive your sin. He'll set you free from those chains of sin that bind you. Get up there. No distraction. Get up there. No disturbance. Get up there. No diversion to another sin. Get up there. And say, Lord, here I am. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord over the radio there, over the television there, online, by yourself, in a congregation, anywhere you are, in any part of the world, and you are connected with this message now, stand up right there. And then the Lord by his blood will forgive you will cleanse you will set you free confess turn away from all that evil and the lord is faithful just to forgive you now father in the mighty name of jesus we come as you told us to come and you said whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, will be saved. I pray for everyone now, giving themselves over to the Lord without any reservation. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Save them in Jesus' name. Transform their lives. Convert them. And give them the grace, God's righteousness, at Christ's expense. Give that to them, everyone now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. Well, thank you, Lord. It is done. It, it is done. Amen. And your salvation has come to everyone that asked of that salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our moderating overseer tonight will lead us in this time of counseling. God bless you. Counsel us. Write their names now. Make sure you take their phone number. And as you take it, you check up. You're welcome to your newfound faith. You're now a child of God. You cannot tell lies. Write their name in capital letter. Take the address, their phone numbers, and check it up. Those at the far away, counselors, make sure you reach there. At my right, extreme end. If they cannot write, you help them. At the very right here, do the same.
Please be fast. Your house address, the name they know them with. As you're writing, make it very clear. The phone numbers, very important. If you are watching online, you just give your life to Christ after the pastor's message, please, you visit what you are seeing on the screen. Fill the number you are seeing there, click to it. And those of us listening on the radio, television, you just give your life to Christ. Send your name, your phone number, and your location, the address. You can see it on the website there, plus 234-915. 444-9263. Four, 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 I repeat again. Plus 234-915-444-9263. Four, 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 there will be a convert rally and there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 3rd April is the time, the day, 2022. More details about this will be sent to you. Counselors, let's be fast. Remember this Sunday thought is banquets everywhere in the whole state and the time is 3 p.m. In Yenegua here, the capital, Okutukutu. As you come, the Lord will bless you. Please, let's be fast. And those of us who are seated, be praying and be preparing. Because tonight, every problem you have come with, you will drop it here. The man of God is fully loaded. Whatsoever the mountain, the Lord will roll it away tonight. Cancel us, be fast. By my left hand side, if you're true, you wave and give me signal. Okay, God bless you. What are the middle here? If you are finished, can you wave your hand? If you are finished this way, wave your hand. Okay. At my right hand side, cancel us if you are finished. Can you wave your hand? Be fast. And the supervisors, you'll be gathering the whole thing now. Anywhere you are, just be seated 
and be praying, preparing yourselves. Any moment from now, there will be a shout. By my right hand side, if you are finished, wave your hand. Let's be fast. Thank God for those who are preparing. If you are finished now, all you do is make sure the people having the challenge just stand by them. You'll see miracle tonight. If you are finished, wave your hand on the right hand side. Okay, God bless you. We can stand up now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Final day miracle catcher. Where are you? Praise the Lord. I will catch. I will catch. Our in Cameroon. I was having a crusade like this. There were boys playing at the corner of the crusade there. When the message was going on, like boys, they were just enjoying themselves. But among them, there was one deaf and dumb boy playing the football with the other kids. And then I said, now, I'm going to throw miracle at you. You will catch it. Then they stopped playing the football. They were attentive because they wanted to catch. Anybody wanting to catch today? And the moment we prayed, and I said, it's there. That deaf and dumb child caught it. Ears open, tongue loose, and they brought him out to give a testimony. Final day, cancer will vanish away. Yeah. All those pains and the swelling of cancer, everything will vanish away. Yeah. That swelling, making the tummy to be like this, going ahead of you before you get there, that thing will come down in Jesus' name. The brain problem, insanity, madness, and the power of the name of Jesus comes out tonight. Praise the Lord, you are delivered. This is the final night for your blind eyes to open, for limb legs to be strong. For paralysis and stroke to vanish away. The final night of miraculous healing for everyone. It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. Raise up that hand. The Lord is right here. Right there by your side. It comes with miracle. It comes with healing. It comes with deliverance. And the Lord will perform, perfect it right now in your life in Jesus' name. One hand up. The other hand, you lay where you have the challenge. And when you hear the final 
Amen. You check up. The miracle of healing will have been deposited in your body. Yeah. Father, we come. Father, we pray. Father, we demand that right now, your love, your mercy, your compassion will come to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Those here at the Alpha location, those there over the radio, over the television, online, everywhere, all over the globe, because you are present everywhere. Touch, heal, deliver everyone in Jesus' name. On this final night, that evil spirit, tormenting spirit, vexing the hearts and the lives and the brain of the people, I command, come out in Jesus' name. The swelling of goiter, swelling in the tummy, swelling elephantiasis in the legs, swelling of an ear, or any other kind of swelling. I command you right now, this moment, come out in Jesus' name. Internal sickness, causing pain in your kidney, in your livers, in your lungs, internal parts of your body. Lord, I pray that you touch and heal them right now. All that pain, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Blindness, that bandage of the devil, come in your sight and remove it right now. Lord, open their blind eyes. Clear up the darkness and the dimness in their eyes in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, it's your turn. That blocked ear open in Jesus' name. That dumb tongue be loosed in Jesus' name. The miracle of hearing, the miracle of speaking. Lord, perform it for everyone needing that in Jesus' name. Arthritis. Stiffness of the joints, short leg, grow out, and all the paralysis and the broken bones be mended right now, be healed right now, be joined together right now. Lord, confirm your word in Jesus' name. Everywhere. Let the incurable be cured right now. Let the incredible happen to everyone right now in Jesus' name. Make the impossible possible in Jesus' name. Everywhere on the grounds here, everywhere outside there, online, in every congregation connected, everywhere, over the radio, over the television, everywhere on YouTube and Zoom, everywhere with everyone, I release your power upon everyone. Yeah. Healed 
you are healed. Delivered, you are delivered. Set free, you are set free. And the power of the Lord operates in your life, operates in your body, operates in your spirit, operates in your brain, operates in your family without any hindrance right now. Lord, let there be a confirmation. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. I said, it is done. Check out your body. The miracle is right there now. Check it up. It has happened.